Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe to introduce Mimu, Mimu uh, used to be a professor at VTT, which is uh, the Dutch uh, equivalent of Teno, but then in Finland. Uh, Finland uh, was involved in many European projects, uh, was uh, CEO of uh, your president of the uh, uh, overarching organization for all construction companies in Finland, and now does the same job for uh, SRV in Finland. So yeah. take it away. Thank you very much. Nice Thank to have you here. Thank you for <clears throat> Thank you for the invitation. Can you hear me well? Yeah, good. Right. And um, and really pleasure to be here. And and it's always difficult to start after Nika's wonderful presentation. So so that was that was really good. Um I'm talking about uh, from a construction company's perspective and what, what we are doing. And this is kind of like I mean, Nico pointed really nicely that well, I mean biological things that how how we can do those and understand, understand those as, as a landscape landscape architects, but it's even more difficult for a construction company to understand that how biological things are working and what we can actually do. Um, I think Winston, Winston Churchill put it really nicely that we are first shaping the buildings and thereafter the buildings are shaping us. So we are really creating the environment and then the environment is, is really kind of like affecting on, on us. And, and this is why the green things and how we are designing our environments is, is so so important. And as, as mentioned already, so there, is, there are so many research uh, articles about uh, mental health and, and green and how that, that can be positive. And also, of course, the physical health as well. Uh, why construction in industry is so important? These numbers are in Finland, but but most of them are are kind of like rather similar in in other industrial countries as well. So uh, the most important thing is that the investments are going to to building and infrastructure. Sixty percent of our investments, so it's a lot a lot of money. So we really need to think how we are putting the money. Then CO2 emissions, 30%, over 30%, and then the use of virgin materials over 30%. And for example, the steel, we are using half of the steel globally, so more than any other industry. So this is really kind of like we have a huge impact. And then, of course, we, ha we have a high impact on the land use and, and also on the sea use. And, and then we are really um, six, six biggest industry responsible for the biodiversity loss. And actually, um, also, the half of our deforestation in Finland is due to construction. Uh, a lot of uh, this construction noise is for the infrastructure where we need to cut down the, the trees. So not that much about building houses or or other buildings. But but this is kind of like the background for why why we think that the biodiversity is, is so important. Uh, we have just recently uh, published a biodiversity program and, and also measures that how we are following it. And, and when we are kind of like doing those drivers for biodiversity loss, so we, we've actually found out that quite a many of those are tied to uh, climate change, CO2 emissions, and also that how we can improve and, and, and recycle our, our, our materials. So these are kind of like um, many of the drivers are kind of like tied together. And, and then we were going kind of like a bit deeper that, well, I mean, what, how, how we can do that. So, so as an industry, so uh, as we use so much materials, so it's kind of like we have really long chains, the value chain is long. Quite often, I mean, when we are buying the material, even though if we are buying the material, which is kind of like produced in, the, in, in Finland, but the components are maybe maybe coming from other countries and even even come from long distances. So that's really kind of like how we actually measure the whole value chain and the impact on biodiversity. We can now calculate somehow or rather good the CO2 emissions because there we have the methods. But for the for the biodiversity, so that's really difficult. We don't actually know that well all the all those uh, kind of like uh, impacts on biodiversity. So that's why we need much more research, much more uh, kind of like science-based facts, what, what is important, and then of course, uh, best practices and innovations. Um, 
uh, it's it's of course evident that we we actually I mean the less we use land and the less we construct, so the better is is for the biodiversity. But at the same time, urbanization is 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 ongoing and and we need homes and and workplaces, so we cannot kind of like stop a whole constructing at, at once. So that's why it's important we minimize, we remediate, compensate, and, and also that how we do the best possible additional actions to, to increase the biodiversity. And, and this is also actually um, because we have been researching quite a lot that well, how we could do those additional actions. And this is so new that there is actually not that um, not that well documented and also you cannot that easily actually buy those if you want to save somewhere the biodiversity what what you need to do in, in your construction place so it's not that easy to to do it somewhere else because there are not actors where you can uh, or, or land owners who who are willing to do that so there are kind of like practical things but then then we were going kind of like through those all those that well i mean what is then what what is needed in in the in in our kind of like that we can see the chains and and we can see that we are, we are quite um in in early stage so we want you to first to have well, well the nature should be a part of the decision making so we should have that part of kind of like company strategies and and really to have the holistic the whole value chains because we are using so much material so it's not only what not not only what we are doing in in that piece of land but that but the whole whole chain and then, of course, the education awareness raising. Then it's land land use changes. This is a super important use, using material, natural resources, climate change, of course, uh, pollutions, really well, basic thing. Uh, then these um, uh, invasive non-native uh, species. That's actually super important for us because we are changing quite of, often the land. And when we are, because we want to have solid foundations, and when we are changing the land, so then always there is a risk that there will be those non-native spaces, and they are typically quite invasive and, and then destroying the, the biodiversity. And then of, we, we should have those renewing actions and, and then, of course, to, to measure the impact on, on natural species. When we go a bit kind of like that, well, how we then measure those, here is, you can see that, well, we are really in the early, early phase that we actually, even though we, we get the statistic about how much land we are using, but then kind of like between the industries, so it's not that clear that who is using the land there and, and all that. So, so we really should kind of like have better measures there also. But basically, I mean, we, we should have kind of like increased the compensated areas and, and decreased the, the constructed areas. Uh, of course, using the recycled uh, materials and, and then to, to uh, contribute to the greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission um, reductions and, and towards the low carbon built environment. Uh, then the, the pollution, I mean, this is kind of like uh, waste is mo mostly kind of like uh, maybe the biggest one from our industry point of view. And this is, of course, I mean, uh, really important also for our business because the less waste we uh, get so that's kind of like the, the more um, successful business is because waste is actually first we are buying the material and then we are but also we need to pay for the for the waste fee and all that so we kind of like double pay so that's why of course this is a good business as well and and then of course these renewing actions and these renewing actions is is something where we actually don't have the measures that much and, and means so there we need to have kind of like more uh, more scalable um, uh, solutions and and then of course that we don't have uh, impact on on the species that the impact is, is decreasing this is also challenging because i mean it depends quite a lot where we are constructing the the, the buildings as well well then I mean uh, those are were all kind of like those kind of like negative things and and then when we think about the positive things so this just shows the sustainability program where we have so what we want to have is also that we are saying already in the in the carbon footprint that we would have like not only decrease in the footprint but but increase in the positive handprint so we would like to also not only kind of like decrease the the biodiversity loss but also also have those positive actions as well. And this is why we have a kind of like um, we are calling it a life cycle uh, wise uh, wise building where we have kind of like environment is one factor then people are one factor because we are building of, of course for the people and then it needs to be 
needs to have a like good financial value in order to kind of like that it's uh, it's uh, kind of like that we can we can make it in real life and that is why we have kind of like put our funding so we have criteria for our funding and there is uh, safety is one of the but but then also uh, this uh, that how we are reducing CO2 emissions and our next round so we are hoping that we get also uh, indicators for those uh, biodiversity actions as well but this is kind of like showing that well if we have the, the, the kind of like more environmental friendly uh, buildings we are doing so the kind of like cheaper the money is is for us and the better business so really kind of like this is I think super important also that we have the financial incentives to do good um, this is the kind of like the, uh, um, how how this um, construction phase uh, is is for us. It's really that the the first when we are starting the the constructing the building, so this comes this peak. We are using the energy in our construction sites, and then all the materials, how they how much they are using, kind of like embodied carbon and and logistic and all that. And then there will be the long time energy use when the when the buildings are are running, and uh, and. What we want to do is, of course, to reduce this peak down because, I mean, this has uh, direct correlation to biodiversity as, as well, and then, of course, to use renewable energy as, as much as possible. What we have done then is to, is to decrease the, so all our construction sites are now net zero emission construction sites, so we are not yet there, but we are kind of like coming, coming down, and then each year, so we are planting trees uh kind of like 16,700 uh, trees each year so that's to kind of like to to compensate what we are what we are doing uh, kind of like still in emitting co2 emissions but that's that's kind of like the the first step and it's not enough what we should do um then what we do is is also to minimize the, the construction weight waste and, and this is actually uh what we can do by ourselves is to uh, to sort sort the waste in the construction site that it can be recycled as as, as good as possible. But the recycling as a shot, so we are buying it from from our our other other companies. And uh, we are kind of like increasing that that is super, super important. And and this is kind of like here we can really see nicely that we, when we set the goals, so we said that well 70 was at that time, uh, it was quite kind of like not easy to, to get and now our average is over over 80 in, in many of, of the construction sites even close to 100 so this is kind of like uh, good that shows the power of, of measuring things um, then um, as said so so the materials had much bigger role in 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 the in new buildings compared to the energy use because energy is, is currently uh, quite a well decarbonized all the, all the time and the to lower the the co2 emissions from the materials so that's the difficult part and that's the where the highest impact is also for the biodiversity and uh, just to to show you what what are kind of like the important part, parts there so it's the the vertical and, and horizontal structures are kind of like to well there are different uh, buildings here and as you can see, so it depends a bit from, from the building type, but basically it's always the vertical. So basic, basically um, walls and, and windows and then roofs and, and floors, which has the biggest impact on. And this is because we are using so much concrete. So that's why we are doing quite a lot of research on concrete, how we can recycle concrete, of course, but also how we can do new concrete with with kind of like really little amount of cement that it would even and even we are kind of like having uh, one uh, we did this spin-off where they have the process is binding co2 so it's actually carbon negative uh, uh, process in in that sense it's it's a good uh, start uh, but uh, currently we cannot use it in the load bearing structures so only in other structures so it's still not yet there where we want it to be but good good progress then how we could reuse the co components so that's uh, we have many of the 70s buildings which are in a bad shape and and but they have a lot of materials so it, it would be good that we could use those materials instead of having those new new materials but the bad thing is here that we have a rather uh, tight regulations we should have always the ce marking on on and, and ce marking would take like one year at least 
to get those C marking, and you would need to do that in indiv individually all the elements, which is quite, quite a lot of elements then. So that would be really time consuming and also really costly. So that's kind of like why we are now in as a construction industry. So we are trying to that wall, how we can actually make the change in a way that we could uh, reuse those those elements much more easily in a way that and, and maybe downgrade it from load bearing to other other structures and, and those and then of course i mean uh then we also need to know that where are available elements and where we can use it so kind of like the logistic and and, and also also we are a bit behind with the with the business models as well so who is who is benefiting from recycling um, so that's why we have those uh, develop. We are developing those materials banks. There is already kind of like, for example, tiles you can use, and or windows and steel and and those kind of like basic components. But co concrete is really kind of like currently the the where we have a lack of information and lack of understanding how we can use existing concrete elements in in new buildings. And the concrete is really the, the one which is the most in intensive for for both for the nature and for CO two. Right, but then then there is a uh, kind of like um, as mentioned. So, so the the urban nature is super important, and and we actually, I mean, it's always when we when we are building. So so this factor is super important because um, when we are building areas where it's green, so it's usually much easier to sell it uh, because people like to have green areas, and also the value of the building will stay higher compared to the areas where you don't have that much green. This is an example of, of uh, blocks of buildings. We are currently building here a one one more block, uh, which are wooden. So they are CLT elements, and we try kind of like uh, and uh, these buildings. So we are even compensating the the all all the CO two emissions what is left uh, from these these buildings for the fifty years time for for the whole whole buildings. But uh, then the regulation here is is again kind of like that we can see that well even if there's a wheel so it's kind of like the regulation sometimes lags behind and because this is a wooden building and uh, well we have the safety regulations a bit different uh, the wooden buildings compared to uh, compared to um, concrete buildings due to fire safety for example and that is why actually we due to fire safety regulations so that was the reason that we couldn't have any green roofs in these buildings because of the fire safety regulations because it might dry out too much so it was only that this is kind of like two two story building here behind so here here we could use for for some green areas so this shows again that kind of like that well it's still kind of like even though you would have wheel but there is regulations which are kind of like lacking a bit behind because i think there could have been um, other other solutions as well uh, for for greening those roofs as well and, and maybe in the future we can do that then later on um then of course it's it's a climate change adaptation i mean that's that's easy easy and that's also uh super important for for greening as well because uh, always when we have those heavy storms and 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 other other kind of like extreme weather occasions, so it's kind of like insurance companies are not paying back those kind of like if you have some damages. So that's why the nature-based solutions are extremely important for us that we can actually prevent prevent those losses much more than with conventional um, structures. And uh, and that's why we have kind of like a, we have given from our constructions this type of like minimum design guidelines. So we have, depending of, of the type of the building, so we have minimum amount of species and habitats with, where, should, where we should have genetically, like a, how many different species we should have there. And then we have this Mino must that you should, I mean, not only grass, but really the Mino, Mino should be there, kind of like that, really to encourage uh, our designers to have the, uh, the kind of biological diversity there. And then, of course, if possible, so, so the wells or, or those where you can store a bit uh, water as, as well. And then we have this green uh, factor minimum requirement. So we are giving kind of like factors that existing trees, if you can, if we can keep it, so they have higher factor compared to new, new big uh, trees and, and those type of things. So kind of like really 
really trying to uh, keep as much nature there, existing nature as, as possible. And then uh, important is also the places for shadow, and this is especially for for schools and daycare centers, but also for for the for the housing as as well. Because I mean, even up in the north, so our summers are becoming quite warm, and uh, and that's why we need those places as well. And then for the schools, especially, so we we are calling kind of like we we would like to have those trees with, uh, for example, apple trees or something what you can eat as well. So kind of like also to encourage the interaction uh, with, with the nature, even in the cities. Um, this is an example of, of uh, one, one wooden school building. And, and this shows, again, uh, a bit, I mean, we would have, I mean, our first version in, in this design was super, super green, and, and there was many trees uh, all over the kind of like the place and, and, and no kind of like bricks at all there. And we wanted to have kind of like permeable, um, uh, permeable uh, surfaces in there. But then, well, we have, of course, the accessibility regulations, safety regulations, you have the fire exit and all that. And, and, and so that's why we need to actually have quite a lot of these bricks uh, in, in the pavements and big areas in the pavements. And we couldn't have the trees, for example, the minimum safety distance should be here. So all the trees should be so kind of like again of course th those safety regulations are super super important that we should have and and accessibility is also super super important but shows again that in practice it's a bit well it's not always perfect than the the end result um another other thing is what we are doing in the construction phase this is kind of uh, uh in in one hospital areas there were some frogs which were rare i can't remember, remember the species name anymore so we were collecting the frogs and that that was actually quite fun <laughs> to, to call it well of course not we but but our, our other companies and and really to, to save them and, and remove them from other existing places that we are not destroying those ones or then the um this this other other one is a uh, office building area and, and there also we, we took the plants to the ecosystem hotel and then uh, put it back uh, on, on the area after the construction phase. And also we have cer certain restrictions when we were building there that when the birds were, were kind of like in the summertime, so we couldn't have the uh, hard noise or, or really any, any ground shaking, shaking works because of the, of the birds. So those type of like things, which is actually, from us, from our point of view, it's, it's also kind of like that we, we should plan the phases in construction much more kind of like not only taking into account kind of like the the other kind of like cost issues, but also the nature issues. And this is, I think, was a good example on, on that as well. And then uh, biocarbon, uh, this is uh, becoming uh, more and more uh, important because this has the, this is kind of like uh, waste residuals for wood burning, we are, or or actually using pyrolysis to do the the bio, bio biomass there, and this is kind of like super good because it's it have a lot of nutrition and it can bind the the moisture as well. So this we are uh, doing doing for for the infrastructures and and then it binds also via the process CO2 as as well. So this this. Uh, it's kind of like what we are bringing now in all, all infrastructure projects. Uh, what we do in the in the runoff utilization, these are a few examples as, as well. So kind of like how we can uh, have small kind of like, well, rivers or, or something. And this is also, of course, super good for the biodiversity because there is then those uh, species who want, want to be in the in the wet places, and then we could have uh, other other species as, as well. So these type of uh, examples, and here this is a bit back, bad picture, but this is really nice for the berries. So it's really uh, it was a bit dry dry summer when we were doing it, but this kind of like combining also the the berries in the in the housing area. Another example here, um, this is in Espo campus area where we have the universities. So and and this is the team. Uh, the local actually, uh, it's a police house and, and municipality house uh, combined. And there again, we should have, because of, of the 
of the regulation. So we should have this type of like uh, areas for for the cars. Uh, that's but then how we combine then do uh, the trees here and also this this kind of like area of of collecting the water and using the water uh, for kind of like making the place of course nicer and then using also to to green the, the garden better in 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 some of times as well. And another important point here was also that this is uh, really uh, kind of like rich for birds. This uh, this this nearby area so that was also kind of like criteria that what type of uh, uh, trees we are planting here so that was based on the on this kind of like that what the birds like and and the insects like uh, then this is an example of, of uh, Helsinki it's an old existing industrial area and uh, this was really uh, a dirty a dirty area so we needed to first of course to purify and chase the land there but then uh, then kind of like it was really nice to see that it, it will become more and more um, rich and, and and the species were were really chosen in a way that well we could give the shelter and food for the birds and, and insects and and also other other small uh, animals and this is also um uh, now, now when it's a bit more grown, so it's it's also really good for the for the people who are living it, and it's it's much more actually nicer place in the in the summer compared to the other other close by areas here because this is a, a green one, and uh, and this a bit contradictory. So we were even putting their uh, wood logs and and just keep them to rotten there in in a way that well that that is also enriching the biodiversity. That is also well, I mean we have really uh we got really contradictory feedback from that some people were really liking well that's super good idea and nice that you are doing that but some people were really well oh, well this is not for a city rotten wooden lock we, we don't want that so that's all, also kind of like that how we are telling the the story in a way that people see the, the good also in those which are maybe kind of like for for your visual eyes not not the nicest ones uh, then we have these uh, stakeholders groups, uh, what we call, uh, well, a guide, gu guide us to the right direction would be maybe the direct translation. And we are, all, we are always asking that, well, what is important for them, how we can uh, kind of like increase uh, our, our value that, or make the kind of like better, better buildings and better areas. And it was really striking, 90% of, of those people, those say, those say that this is very important for us, that the green values are super, super important. And that was uh, very encouraging, of course, for us. And even when we were asking more details, so it was uh, also 92% was, was saying that, well, I mean, this is affecting, the green is affecting on our decision to buy a office or to buy a home. So that was really kind of like good news for us. Well, some examples I actually told you already about this wood city building uh, and this other other one is this uh, multi-purpose building. Uh, this, these are kind of like uh, some examples, maybe maybe in a way that they are combining the low carbon solutions, but also the biodiversity and, and especially the, the kind of like the green uh, urban flooding issues. Uh, how we see it, and then then this is uh, this is kind of like how how we uh, see it uh, as as our business. So we, of course, I mean, if you do something more, so it's it's a bit um, increase in investments depending a bit of the of the place. So it's ten to to well up to ten percent, maybe sometimes only three three four percent more investments. But at the same time, you get redu reduction of life life cycle cost, and more importantly, it's kind of like that the it's easier to sell those buildings who are taking into account this um, uh, this environmental issue. So it's much quicker the selling process, and you get the uh, get better price as well. So uh, quite often in, in in engineering, so we are focusing on these these uh, factors which are below. So environmental impact, resources, cost, all those. Well, I mean, we are good as an engineer, we are good in calculating that. But but actually, I mean, we don't never get the sustainability goals if you don't if you don't increase the quality of the life. So that's as as important as the as those hardcore numbers. So that's 
And that's why we need kind of like the landscape architects and, and understanding that what is good and, and behavior scientists to, to understand the, how we really create the, the future environments in, in a way that it's, it's good for living. And then, of course, when, when we are constructing, so we are constructing for those people who have not even born yet because the buildings and, and infrastructures have so long lifetime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, other questions? Please. Thank you. <laughs> that the benefits that these um, interventions provide are more accessible to, for example, more wealthier um, groups in society or yeah, talking about gentrification. Um, and I think also thinking more about social sustainability, not just sustainability in a physical or ecological term. How do you think that could be approached more in the future? Because I guess also, um, as we know, the impacts of climate change often really the most vulnerable groups of society are the ones that are hit the most and have least access to these um, interventions. So, yeah, I don't know what you think um, the current state of really tackling that, that issue is beyond yeah. the physical design. Yeah, it's yeah. super good point what you raised. I mean, this is extremely important. Um, uh, by by us, I mean, uh, well, I mean, of course, those countries who are not not in, uh, yeah. of course, those people people who are not in in Finland, uh, so so they have kind of like in uh, southeast, and and they are even even more vulnerable. But what we do in uh, is that um, it's quite often that if you have a, a land, so you must build their kind of like social housing private housing and, and it's, it's kind of like by the law that you are mixing the areas so this is uh one one way to do it and then kind of like also to put in the kind of like those green factors how much area you should have green because that's extremely important and we can see it it already that in those areas where you have the less green and and kind of like a lot of concrete so it's the kind of like we have those well, not, I wouldn't call really criminal, but you know, those kind of a graffiti and, and all that little vandalism we have there much more compared to those, one, those areas where you have this green. So that's super, super important point. Yeah, we have another one here, then Rene, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really get, um, you're from SRV, but are you from the government or from the United Building Companies of, and to whom? Uh, are these rules applied? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm really impressed. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, we are a construction company. Um, so, so these rules are for us. So we are doing it by, for us. But then we are, of course, pushing that um, we are we are the federation to all companies that, and and then for also for the kind of like for the regulations as well. But currently, we are doing by ourselves. But maybe to add, it's good to know that you had a back, have a background at VTT in working in this field, like the TNO in the Netherlands, uh, which that knowledge you took to that company, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Renee. Thank you. Um, um, thank you for uh, interesting uh, uh, presentation and the really interesting broad range of, of things you're looking at. So it's really you're really uh, looking at all different fronts from a really big sustainable perspective. Is there something like um, we're talking here about ecological urbanism specifically? Is there something uh, like an angle which you think is interesting, or you're looking at strategies, or maybe even kind of scenarios where you? go all wood or go that's so all bio-based materials or uh, just as a as as a kind of i don't know maybe is there a think tank somewhere or do you think <laughs> in the in in the organization which 
looking, thinking of the, the buildings that Nika was showing, uh, you know, as a sort of out of the box thinking about, about you know, um, form and structure. Yeah, yeah, we are actually, I mean, uh, we are, and that's a really good point. I mean, we are uh, all the time kind of like, for example, wood is, is typical uh, question. So we are all the time kind of like optimizing that, how we can do use that. Sometimes um, it's again, the regulation who are saying that, well, we cannot use the wood in this, uh, this area because of the, for example, fire safety, or it can be aesthetic things or, or something. So, the, but, but basically we have all, always those scenarios. And then of course, I mean, we cannot invent by ourselves everything and, and we don't have the capacity to do that. So that's why it's extremely important that we are working together with universities and not only in Finland, but uh, in, in other countries, for example, with, with Nico, we have been working uh, and really kind of like to, and, and to use uh, also, we, we do quite a lot of cooperation that, um, that universities will do their master thesis or PhD thesis and then kind of like study what we could, how we could improve and on those, what solutions we do. And that's why also uh, small companies, kind of like spin-off companies are super important for us, especially for new in innovations, new, new type of uh, materials, solutions, all that. Thank you. Um, I was also really interested in the point that you made about reusing or re, uh, using new materials to make buildings, for example, more carbon efficient, or also thinking about how the building can be used afterwards, um, new buildings. And um, I recently saw the, a documentary about kind of that idea of using really local materials that only come from that area, for example, clay around Berlin. Um, there was also an architecture school in um, uh, Barcelona teaching that. So I wanted to ask you maybe also in the, in the real context of Finland, what your experience is with um, really trying to use only materials that come from a certain area that is local and not having to get materials from abroad, shipping them in, because I guess that also already consumes a lot of energy and yeah. Yeah, yeah a good point. And, and this is actually uh, always when we are, uh, we have kind of like always when we are purchasing materials. So we have the criteria that what is the recycling rate of the material and what is the CO2 emission from the material. And in the CO2 emission, we are calculating the logistics also. So we are kind of like always optimizing that. But then, then there is then the reality, sometimes you don't have available materials close by. So then, well, you have the timetables and then it's, it's not always optimal. But I mean, this is a, those are the two criteria where we are always asking uh, from, from our providers. Okay, thank you. Are there more questions? What what I I don't see anyone, so I can yeah. Thank you very much, Mimu. And what I think is pretty interesting is that we see this now happening for a construction company in Finland. There are maybe a few in the Netherlands who do it, but certainly not uh, everybody or not that many. And what we, for instance, there's many landscape architects or students here. Well, uh, and some landscape and design firms. What do we do with this? Eh? I know we sometimes calculate stuff, but is it like this or, you know, so there's, I think there's also some steps to take and at least something, yeah, we all choose design as a profession. So maybe we don't like to calculate, but sometimes it's, it's nice to, uh, to have that also next to uh, development. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, warm hand of applause to Mimu again. Um,